you guys. Look, I made a little intro video. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully there was sound on it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was, if there was or not. There but was uh, on it when I saw it. Oh, okay. There was. No, I mean when you showed it to me. Oh well, I, yeah, but that's I don't have not... my speaker on, so I oh, can't tell. That wasn't on the stream. I wasn't sure, but it's got right. like little music on it. Yeah. Nico says, uh, any word on the cookbook? I haven't been active on the videos for a bit. I'm actually on the very last section. So yeah. all I have to do is do one more short section and then we're going to do a quick um, photo shoot because yes. I need some pictures of him like in his chef jacket and stuff that I want to like insert in there and then yeah. it should be done. And then we're going to put some of the cat in there too. Yeah, the thing is I want to also go over and proofread, make sure, not proofread, but just make sure that everything is easy to read and use. You know what, though? I was thinking, ah, maybe I shouldn't get into something like that. I was thinking <laughs> about maybe putting a section at the beginning about shit like knife skills and preparation. But Well, you could put that in the introduction, because I have space yeah. for an introduction, and we haven't written that yet. All right. Okay. Yeah, because um, people need to, you know... Although, you know, that that's, that's on the individual cook, whether or not they want to learn how to develop knife skills and... You can go online to see how to learn that stuff, like how to dice, yeah. how to. I shop, mean, don't feel like you have it. to put every single right. thing in this book. Like I said, right. it's kind of it's kind of like our take on stuff. Recipes yeah. we make all the time, recipes we grew up with, yeah, stuff like that. So you know, kind of specific to us. Or... Yeah, I want a big part. A big part of cooking is physicality, physical skills, regular kitchen skills, and it, it really pains me sometimes to see a home cook struggle with tools or to do things out of order like not picking a pot up and moving it in a certain way you know what i mean to, to pour there's just weird weird things that non-cooks do that drive professional cooks up the fucking wall you know <laughs> it's just like no 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 no, that's not how you hold a knife you know that kind of shit you know just, stop it stop it yeah you're gonna cut your fucking fingers off you know and there's this shit that they do you know but that's on the cook. I'm I'm just gonna leave that mostly on the cook. Yeah, you can't you can't take responsibility for yeah. everybody cutting their fingers off. Right, and <laughs> and that's a subject unto itself. How to develop all those skills? Yeah. And if you're a grown person and you don't have those skills yet, then there's there's a problem. That usually means that you're not cooking enough, and uh, you may not be interested in this cookbook. I don't know. Depends. I, I don't know how normal people operate really. <laughs> I do what I do. I don't really know what y'all do. Yeah, I do what I want. Yeah, I do what I want. Yeah. No, I was made to do that shit because I grew <laughs> up in fucking kitchens. You know, when I was in high school in in Michigan, I was working at fucking um at at a bar and grill down there, and the grill was fantastic. And the two cooks that worked in there were like little Gordon Ramsay motherfuckers. They were mean. <laughs> a little Me. Gordon Ramsay, yeah, this were, big. <laughs> no, they were young. You know, they were they were actually they were actually guys in their twenties and thirties. But from my point of view, they were older guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they made good money, and they were really good at what they were doing. I didn't realize it wasn't until later when cooking became real corporate, where they're buying shit from fucking Cisco and shit pre made and everything. You know, that corporate is that shit. They they're not cooking. You know? Oh yeah, they're just heating stuff. Yeah, up they're heating shit up. Re, you know, I started off. It started off watching washing dishes and then a couple months later i'm in there making salad dressings and we made salad dressings from fucking scratch and then making desserts fucking custards and then fucking uh being a pastries and uh pastries and bread and then you start graduating up to dealing with fucking deep fryers and you know and so you had to work your way up from the bottom and i learned real essential skills that were real old school you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't just... And it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference in, in what comes up. Like a store-bought salad dressing just doesn't... Like, say, for a store-bought blue cheese that just never... Like, from Kraft, that'll never compare to fucking scratch-made blue cheese dressing. Yeah, just, and that's the just, thing. It's like sometimes yeah. it's okay, it's good enough. Yeah, it's but, fast and easy, but that's yeah. Not the and real well, the thing. thing about it is like it's not even so much that because it has to be shelf stable, so it has yeah. to have like a lot of stuff in it that keeps it from you know going yeah. bad too fast or right. whatever. So it's like there's stuff in there that if you made it fresh, it wouldn't be in there. So yeah, it all makes, those like, stuff difference. like blue cheese and ranch and shit like that. It's a it's the, it's, it's a specific ratio of sour cream and mayonnaise. And then it's seasoned, and then you're adding shit like crumbled blue cheese into it. And there's just nothing pre-made that's ever going to fucking compare with that. It's thick. It's cool. It's real cool and cold when it comes out of there. 
It's almost kind of like cheese flavored fucking ice cream. That's how rich and creamy that oh shit God. is. I want it's some cheese flavored ice yeah, cream. Yeah, man. That sounds good. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing like the real thing. Like it sounds gross, but also kind of it's good. Just, <laughs> well, when it goes on the salad, you know, depending on what kind of lettuce and everything, it's just it, the texture of it is just, you know, nothing out of a damn bottle is going to compare with it. Yeah. It just it doesn't happen. Nope. So um, let's see what everybody's saying. Yeah, that's why we, because here's the thing, like I said, we're still going to do matinee shows, yeah. but we can't, because last night I was like, well, do you want to watch a new movie and talk about that tomorrow? Or do you want to talk about more food? And he was like, well, I'm kind of tired. I don't really feel like watching a couple movies. So he's like, well, we'll just talk about pizza tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't actually make pizza today. Today, we made yeah. brisket. Yeah, I made brisket. Well, well actually, I, last night, because yeah. he, he put it on and let it cook all night. Yeah, the I oven. cooked it for 12 hours. Yeah, it cooked for 12 Big hours. Big old brisket. It it just like felt like butter. Yeah. Fell apart. You didn't even yeah. need it. So we were trying to eat it with a knife. I said, shit, you don't even need the knife. You can no. just pull it apart just with a, a with a fork. And it was, yeah, it was delicious. Yeah, I got a big old beef brisket. Yeah, it's like, it's, like yeah. A, it's a slab. Slathered it with well, first of all, I took gravy master. I would have taken liquid smoke, but I didn't have any. Took gravy master and fucking put it in and brushed it on there on the outside of it. Let it sit for a bit. And then I slathered the whole thing with uh, uh, French's French's um, uh, mustard, and then put a bunch of cracked black pepper over it. And just let it sit in there, and then cooked it. Two, and then put it in it, put it in a pan, covered it with uh, tin foil, cooked it twelve hours at two hundred and twenty degrees. It came out real good. Yeah, you put it on Pulled at like nine o'clock last night yeah. and took it out a little before the nine. The fat just morning. fell off of the outside of it because it's it was kind of a fat, you know, brisket's kind of fatty, but then what was left is that real nice. That makes some good sandwiches. You gotta cut it the too. right way. Yeah, you gotta cut it the right way. It's just like roast beef, you know, real yeah. good. Yeah. Tila's asking favorite pizza toppings. Oh man, there's All a lot them. of them. Fresh, <laughs> fresh mushroom. Yeah. Pineapple and ham. Uh, there was a barbecue way of doing barbecue pizza. I haven't done a long time ago. Got to go back and look at it. It's like a barbecue meat lovers pizza. There's a way to do that, but that none of that shit's traditional. That's all bullshit we came up with here. Um, Italian type toppings are are, are really. You know, I honestly I like sun dried tomatoes on mine. I like I don't like a lot of meats. If it you know what when I was growing up, my favorite pizza when I'm growing up, and if I can still find it sometimes. Um, we had this tiny little hole in the wall pizza joint uh, near where we grew up in Daytona. And we, you know, when I was a kid, they didn't have delivery really. So you had to go and pick it up. And uh, the fuck was the name of that place? Pantheon. I don't even know if it's still there. But um, they did a fantastic hamburger and onion pizza. And it wasn't like spicy sausage, like Italian sausage or anything like that. It was just like hamburger with a little bit of like maybe salt and pepper or whatever. So it wasn't like real spicy meat. But so it was like hamburger with like, you know, onions on it like sauteed onions and that shit was delicious but other than that i'm not a big fan of i'll eat meat on pizza you know i'm not picky i'll eat pretty much anything on pizza but if i'm you know left to my own devices um i like i tend to like more vegetable i like mushrooms i like uh peppers sun-dried tomatoes roma tomatoes um banana peppers that kind of stuff like i like all that kind of stuff on pizza okay we're gonna talk about pizza yeah, let's talk about some fucking pizza. I um, have a section in the cookbook about pizza. Pizza has rules. All right. Pizza yeah. has rules. If you, it's got rules. <laughs> if you break any of these rules, you're going to fuck that pizza up. Okay. Where am I going to start? First rule of pizza is that making your own dough is the key. You go down there and buy a pre-made piece. I mean, I've done that kind of shit. You're trying to make make something real fast out of nothing. You know what I mean? I've I've, I've taken. You got to have a pizza stone. That's the first thing. Here's the first rule to cooking pizza: you must have a stone. Pizza stones can be had in different ways. They'll sell it as a pizza stone. It's round. There are also certain kinds of tiles that you can get that are stone tiles from. People put them in floors, and if you cut them the right size, you can actually line an entire oven rack with stone. But you got to know what you're doing. You got to have good peel skills. All right, so you need a stone. Pizza cooks by induction. All right. In other words, <clears throat> you have a hot surface and you place a cold pizza, a cold dough on top of it, and 
the heat from the stone is sucked directly into that dough, making it crispy and chewy. If the temperature is wrong, the texture will be fucked up. You must cook at at least 500 degrees. The best is about 550 to 600, but some ovens don't go up that high. Ours only goes to 525. Yeah. Some some of the best pizzas are cooked in fucking X kilns where they used to fire like porcelain stuff so they can get close to like 7 or 800 degrees. As the cooking as the as the cooking temperature goes up, the cooking time goes down. So at 550 degrees on a hot stone, cooking time on a thick on, on a pizza that's fully loaded with stuff, about 15 minutes. Between 12 and 15 minutes. If it's seven, eight hundred degrees, it might only be five minutes. But you get a feel for it yourself. Most so when you're making a pizza, most of the cooking time is trying to heat that stone up. So that stone might be in that oven for an hour before it gets up to 550 degrees. But you're only going to be cooking for 10, 15 minutes, so it's not all that fuel fuel inefficient. So once the stone's hot, sometimes that's the time to do pizza party. If you want to do five or six pizzas, if you got that's the time to do it. You know? Yeah. Because most of the energy was in heating that stone. Okay. Another way to do it. Now that's that's the best way to do it at home. I'm not going to talk about cooking on wire racks. That's something that you know, like in a big high volume restaurant pizza pizzeria wire rack is another way to do it but we're not gonna talk about it for the home home ovens don't really get hot enough for that so you have to get your pizza stone to get the pizza on and off the stone you're gonna need a thing called a peel and a peel looks like a snow shovel it's a big old flat piece of metal with a long rod long handle on it and you need to develop the skills of picking up a rolled out round piece of dough picking it up and getting it on the peel and then flinging it back off the peel there's a bunch of tutorials and stuff online that'll tell you how to do it to get a dough on and off a pizza peel and or on and off of a surface the dough has to be strong enough to work with and hold together but it can't be wet and sticky yeah, everything so you, has to be floured. Everything has to be floured, and you have to have cornmeal as a lubricant to get things off and on the peel. Okay? If you can't develop these kinds of skills of working with a peel and a stone and high temperature and how to make dough and deal with dough with your hands, your only other option is a cast iron pan and making a pan pizza, which yeah. that's in the book too. So if you don't have these fucking equipment that I'm talking about, which is it's an investment... You don't have the peel and the stone, you're going to have to get you a cast iron pan, which that's not cheap either. A good cast iron pan is over $100. Okay. In that one, you put the dough in the pan, you push it all out. You might have some cornmeal and oil in the bottom of the pan so it doesn't stick. You make sure it's the right thing. Then you start putting your sauce and your toppings and your cheese. Yeah, you're making like a deep dish, Like a deep dish pizza. Yeah. And you put that in. Now, the temperature isn't as high on that. Probably about 450 Cooking time's a little bit more, maybe about 15, somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. And that'll give you a pan. Depending pizza. on how much shit you got. Depending on how much is in. <laughs> the more toppings on the pizza, the more the more the cooking time. Okay. Now, the enemy of pizza is water. All right. The pizza kit, the, the sauce has to be a tomato sauce that's reduced slightly to have as, as little water in it as possible. Okay. The toppings have to have as little water in them as possible. One of the big culprits is um, mushrooms. Fresh mushrooms, when they cook, release water. That water will be released on the pizza. If you have a whole bunch of mushrooms on that pizza, it'll swamp. It'll release that water and it'll just get pizza soup in there. (laughs) Now, if the cooking temperature is real high, that may not be a problem. It's just that when the pizza comes out of the oven, you can lay it down on your on, on your pizza pan that you're going to cut on, and just take some paper towel and drop and let it drop on top of the pizza and just press down with your fingers and absorb all that water. Don't serve it like that. Absorb the water off the top of the pizza, and 
and usually it'll turn out okay and then you cut it and serve it so don't serve a fucking pizza with a bunch of like, water on top of a lot it. of times right. though if we're doing putting if we're putting a lot of mushrooms on there sometimes we good. saute them so, yeah that's what i was gonna do. next step if yeah. you're gonna have like a mushroom pizza and you want it loaded with a bunch of mushrooms don't put raw mushrooms on the pizza and cook it okay it'll swamp all right uh what you do is just uh melt some butter in a pan and saute those on un- uh, those those mushrooms and they'll release the water in terms of as water vapors they'll dry a little bit so get the water out and then put it on the pizza as a topping so pre-cooked toppings on any pizza are more forgiving yeah so especially part. especially watery right like watery right. vegetables and okay. stuff as you add toppings to a pizza getting it on and off the peel onto the stone becomes more and more difficult because when you're putting the peel into the oven and you're using English to fucking slide that pizza off, pap, you got to snap it, snap it, snap it, snap it, and then pull back. All right? You'll 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 see people doing it. There's whole tutorials how to do it. If there's a bunch of toppings, they go flying off the fucking pizza down the back of the oven and fucking start smoking and burning. We speak from experience. Yep. <laughs> so another way to do it is that you have the stone on the rack and it's fucking hot. It's been in there forever. All right? Just throw a dough that has sauce and a little bit of cheese on it onto the pizza that's easy to deal with close it let it cook for a few sec for a few minutes open the oven back up pull it out top it yeah and then throw the rack back in there and shut and then shut it that way you didn't try to get that pizza onto that stone with all those toppings on there topped it after it was already in place that's a safe way of doing it because man one time we yeah. made this pizza and we weren't great. really thinking about that and yeah. it had like chunks of chicken on it had yeah. artichoke carts on it it had like all this stuff and yeah. we were trying to like put it on the on the stone and like shit kept falling yeah. off in the bottom of the oven that it was smoking yeah well what happened is like... i tried to sling a fully loaded pizza onto the fucking stone yeah. like that and it all the p- toppings just went off the fucking back yeah we tried to be too and cool. all those fucking expensive toppings just being ruined and shit and falling down onto the bottom of the fucking stove that off fucking, the smoke alarm yeah, the fucking <laughs> smoke and all i had to do i wasn't really thinking all i had to do is just put a damn cheese pizza on there yeah. Let it cook for a few seconds, and then top it. And then put, yeah, because then, then you can it. just pull out the rack yeah, with your, rack you thing, know, yeah. with your, uh, what do yeah. you call it, your little... As you yeah. add more toppings to that pizza, too, it's heavier. So it's pushing down on the dough, which can mean sometimes it'll push through the little layer of cornmeal or flour that you have on the peel, and water will go, and it'll stick to your stone, to your surface. Okay, I'm working on an island, a kitchen island, yeah. which is like a, a marble tabletop countertop in the center of my kitchen and i'm making it on the fucking counter you make a pizza on a counter not on a pan or anything like that so your counter's got to be clean and you want it to be as hard as possible something like you could do it on linoleum but you're not really supposed to it's kind of linoleum can be kind of what do you call it porous kind of porous yeah you, you ideally you want it to be stone you yeah know, like granite like or... granite or marble yeah because there, there's no porousness, so things go on and off it real well, and, and you can sanitize it. So your your kitchen tabletops are your surface that you're working with. All right. Now, step one to all that. That's the some of the general rules. I think I pretty much covered it. The biggest challenge to making the pizza, the components to making the pizza. Making tomato sauce and sauce is not that difficult. That's the same as any kind of pizza sauces. There's a lot of recipes for it online. It's pretty much the same as spaghetti sauce. It's just there's less water in it. Okay, it's, you can either reduce it down. You can take pizza sauce and reduce it down. Okay, in other words, just boil it and leave some of the wa- get some of the water out of it. Okay, make it a little thicker and pastier. Um, but you know we're not talking about totally pasty. Just thin, you know. Thicker. Not not as thin as spaghetti sauce. Not as thin as spaghetti. A little bit thicker than that. Yeah. Right. You're trying to get water away from dough. Yeah. And crust. All right. You don't want because what the when you put sauce on top of a raw dough and then you start cooking it, there's a there's a few seconds there where the water from the sauce seeps into the dough and when it cooks, it gives a, a layer of gumminess between the crust and the sauce. There'll be like a strip of gum. You yeah. don't want that. You want that to be as minimal as possible. There's a bunch of different ways to get to, to, to trick that. You can just put 
a dough with nothing on it, just dough in there and cook it for a few seconds. Yeah, some and, people do that. And then and that'll that'll kind of harden the top surface, pull it back out, then top it with the sauce and the cheese and put it back in. That's another way to do it. That's to prevent that gummy strip. All right. Uh the hardest component to make is the dough. A lot of people are very uncomfortable working with dough. All right. I'm gonna get the dough in a second. Let me read the uh let's read the comments. Let's see what's going on. Everybody's saying. Yeah, and another thing too is because Tila kind of brought this up, but pizza sauce, um, a lot of it is because some people like tangier sauce, some people like slightly sweeter sauce. Like I kind of like a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but some people like kind of tangier. I can't really have real tangy pizza sauce because it gives yeah. me heartburn. But it's like so you have to really kind of get into a thing where you have to keep tasting it really to get that balance that you want, yeah. like between the sweetness and the yeah and the uh, tanginess. Yeah. All right. Now T is saying she likes thin crust. All right, T. If you like a real thin crust, and you don't have a lot, I'm going to teach you a secret. You want, you want a thin crust, but you don't have a whole lot of time to make dough. You can cheat and make a pizza on a Mexican flour tortilla. Yeah, we've done that before. As long as you have a stone, <laughs> it'll be ultra thin and ultra crispy, kind of yeah, like... Yeah, it's like a cracker. Like, almost like a cracker. And yeah. that was real similar to what to what Pizza Hut used to use. That, yeah, was that damn... Basically a big old tortilla. Yeah, it's not we made them on tortillas. We made them yeah. on uh, naan bread. Yeah. Which yeah. that works too. You still need a stone. <laughs> yeah. To get the texture right. You can't cook it on a metal pan. If you're fucking around with metal pans, you're just jerking yourself off. It'll never, fucking, <laughs> it'll never be not right. in the fun way. <laughs> not in the fun way. You got to cook on stone. All right. It's a huge difference. All right. Um, now, the secret, if you're going to try to cheat and cook on a fucking tortilla, which is the, one of the best cheats, really, or, or on a piece of naan bread, that, that works too. All right. It's nowhere near as good as fucking homemade or handmade crust, but... For instant crust, I'd rather do that than buy one of those fucking DiGiorno fucking packaged crusts in the pit. Nah, fuck that. That's a waste of money. Just fucking get a goddamn fucking tortilla. <laughs> now, if you're going to use a tortilla, you can't put a lot of toppings on it. Well, yeah. You can't put a whole lot of, uh, you can't put a whole lot of sauce on it because it'll kind of, it'll overpower the crust in a way. You'll, you'll see if you ever try it. It just makes a fucking real fast, cheap quick to make pizza thin crust pizza all right making dough there's a making cup. dough making dough <laughs> Ooh, the first thing when making pizza dough is you have to overcome your fear of fucking with dough okay right? you're going to be using your hands all right and you have to get it out of your mind that you that you shouldn't touch food no your hands are clean you're working in the kitchen. Well, hopefully. You, your hands are fucking clean because <laughs> you've been washing your hands. You're going to touch the dough. All right. There's one, two things you absolutely need. Well, there's three. Okay. Everything in this fucking dough that I'm telling you about, it has to be exactly the same always. You need to get this. You need to get some dry yeast. You can get these. You need yeast. All right. <laughs> and it's better just to buy them in these big fucking containers. That's, That's a Fleischmann's. Lot. Yeah. You can make bread and do all kinds of stuff with, with these yeasts like this. You need yeast. After the yeast is open, okay, this is just in a in like a foil bag. Pour the rest of the yeast into a jar or something that's clean. Close it and put it in a refrigerator door. Keep it, keep the keep the uh, yeast cold. Okay. It'll you can also pour it into a Ziploc bag and put it into the don't leave it exposed though in your uh, refrigerator. All right, so you need yeast. You also need water, and the water should be filtered. If you have those little bread of water filters, filter out the water, okay? And there's a certain kind of bread, you, uh, 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 a certain kind of flour you need. Fucking all-purpose flour is never going to be right. It's never I mean, right. it works, but it's not as and good. And you as have to know be. what you're doing. Yeah. And the ratios change. That's a very thin flour. It's not real high gluten. It's a weak flour, which means that you have to put... a I use a lot of the flour flour versus the water ratio and even when it ferments because we're going to do retarded for fermentations but i'm going to talk about it in, a, in in the in the um in, in the in the cookbook 
it'll never have the consistency. A pizza dough is supposed to be strong enough to support the pizza, and then by the time you get to that crust and you pull on it, it, it it's crisp on the outside, and in the center, it's kind of chewy. It's like a chewy bread, all right? And that's that's what you need, all right? That's how you do it. And the flour that you use is heavy bread flour. That's the one you got to have, and it's hard to find that. Um, Actually, Publix carries it. I used to be able to get it in 20-pound bags. But That's Sam's, but for Sam's, some reason. I guess it doesn't sell much, so they yeah. don't have it anymore. Heavy bread flour. That's for making heavy bread. <laughs> All right. Not that pussy bread. Not yet. You need a big bowl. Big bowl. Okay. And big metallic bowl. You have to have all this equipment. And you need a spatula. Or a rubber egg flipper. Or a rubber spatula. You put in a cup of warm water. All right. Filtered water. You put that in there. You put two teaspoons. Or excuse me. No. Two tablespoons of sugar into that warm water. And stir it. And then two tablespoons of yeast. And let it sit in there for about 20 minutes. 30 minutes. And it'll kind of foam. Stir it every now and then. It'll it'll start to foam. It'll smell a little bit like beer. When you smell that, it's ready. Okay, and that's a cup. And then you put in um, two cups of water into that, which will kind of thin it out a little bit. All right, and then put about about a t tablespoon of salt in that and stir it. What that's going to do is that's going to kill some of that yeast off in there. And the more salt you add to it, the chewier the bread will end up being that it kind of affects t texture i've noticed all right once that's done slowly mix in six cups of that heavy bread flour into that bowl of three uh three cups of water that you have in there wait a minute hold on is it three no it's two yeah it's three cups so six cups two at a time put two cups in there stir it and then two more cups stir it two more cups Stir it. By the, by the time you get to the end of that last cup of dough, it starts to pull itself together. It gets hard to, to fold it over, but just keep folding it. And then take some olive oil and pour it around the outside of that big old ball of damn dough. And use that rubber spatula and go around that bowl and bring the oil underneath the dough. And then just roll. And then the dough comes free of the of the of the bowl and you can reach in there and turn it around and you can knead it and then just let it sit there in a warm room or in a warm oven that's turned off maybe you have a towel over it or something you know uh to keep the top of the dough from drying out and let it rise and and you know every half hour or so go in there and knead it back down and it'll rise back again and it'll knead it back down and then it'll rise again and that shit will go on for three four hours five hours and then take the damn dough, scoop it out of the damn bowl with your hand, and put it in a big old Ziploc bag, big gallon Ziploc bag. Pour in some olive oil, slosh it around, make it so it's free from the plastic bag, close it a little bit, put it in the refrigerator, and let it sit in there overnight. Keep an eye on it. It'll blow up, and then you'll try to knock some of the air out of it. But once it cools off, it'll stop rising. And it's going to sit in there and ferment overnight. All right. It will. The, if you were to cook it instantly, the texture would not be right. You want to get it at least the next day. The day after that, even better. Well, I've just told you how to make enough dough for probably about, depending on the size of the pizza, maybe about three large pizzas, maybe like four or five medium ones, or a bunch of little small ones. So that's quite a bit of dough. Now... When it comes time to make a pizza, you go to your working surface, which is for me an island. <clears throat> I get a bowl, all right. Now I got in my in my pantry. I would take those twenty five pound bags of flour and pour them into a big clean bucket, big plastic bucket with a lid on it. Okay, and the ones that I got the buckets, they were actually started off as cat food buckets. They had dry cat food in them. And once the cat food went done, I just sanitized it, washed it out. It's just a generic bucket, okay? So I pour all the bread into the bucket. That's how you do it in a restaurant. So when you need flour, you open up the top of the bucket. You take just a regular bowl, a soup bowl, and scoop up some flour and put some... It could be general... It, at this point, it can be it could be any kind of flour because yeah. the dough's already made. 
you're just going to use the flour as like something to help lubricate the dough pour a little mountain maybe like a half a cup of flour maybe half a cup of flour if you got a if you got this much dough a lot of this shit's by eye and experience if you've got a ball of dough this big it's going to take about a half a cup of that flour on there you put you put the ball of dough in the half a cup of flour and you turn the ball around it and you're going to actually cover that ball with flour and then once it's totally covered you're going to squash down on it and take a rolling pin and roll it out into a circle that's the easiest way to do it okay once it's rolled out into a circle fold the edges over the top to make a crust sprinkle some what do you call it cornmeal on the top of it and then pick it up and flip it upside down and it'll take guts to do that if you've never done it before because you're going to stretch it you're going to fuck it all up but you get a, you get the hang of flipping the dough over if you flip the dough over and it falls apart, you fucked up the dough. It should have enough strength to do that. Yeah. It should be strong and stretchy. Okay. Once you flip it over, you now got the fucking thing. And then you start top to put some put some sauce on it, maybe some cheese. Pick it up with your peel like I told you about and put it on the hot stove. That, that, there it is, 15 minutes. You can add toppings to it later. That's how it's done. Now, when you go to make your first dough and you make your first pizzas, you're going to fuck it up. You're going to fuck it up. You just cannot. Me as an experienced cook trying to make pizza. I fucked it up. For at least six months. Yeah, because I, I remember like you going through a lot of the. You have to learn. Perfecting. You have to learn. Stuff. I mean, you get a pizza made, but you're not satisfied with it. Sorry, Armand's asking what I'm drinking. It's just it's yeah. iced coffee. With almond yeah. milk in it. <laughs> You'll get the pizza made. You're just not going to be very satisfied with it. Yeah. You need all the little skills about handling dough, aging dough, how long the dough should age. It's written down online, but reading it and understanding it is very different from doing it with your hands. And I tried to do shortcuts at first, like uh, it probably doesn't really have to be cooked on stone. Yes, it does. Every time you cook it on metal, it fucked it up. Fucked it up. Just <laughs> the texture would be totally wrong. It's a pizza, but the dough, the dough would be like stale as a piece of cardboard. It had like a cardboard uh, texture to it. That's that's the difference. I think sometimes too, if you cook it on metal, it seems like it burns it on the bottom. Yeah, it dries the bottom it, out. Yeah, and it and, <clears throat> and it never rises properly because it's not cooking by induction. If had you done it, but because there's, it, there, there isn't enough mass and enough heat, um, in a piece of metal. You know what I mean? To 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 suck the heat out of the metal into the dough at at a high rate of speed to get that damn crispy outside with a chewy inside. That doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, and and if you tried to cook it on cold steel, Leonard was he you had the thing made in the pizza pan and put it in a hot oven, it would be even worse. The way I told you to do it is the only way it's done because that's the way pizza was fucking made. It was made in a kiln. And they were putting it in a hot kiln on the stone bottom of a kiln. Of a kiln. That's how it was done. Yeah. And that's why it comes out that way. Yeah, and that's like the best way to make it. Yeah. Like I said, you can make it other ways and it's it will always be okay, inferior. but yeah. it's not going to be as good. I mean, it's a, it's a big difference. Well, I got standards. They're, they don't even come out okay. It's not even okay. It's just like unacceptable. Yeah, because like Tom That's is like good. not if no. he makes something and if everybody else like says it's good, but he doesn't think no. it's good, he's just like no, he no. Just it's, it it's either great or it's just fucking unacceptable. Yeah. <laughs> there yeah. is no mediocrity. You know, if it's mediocre, then it's shit. Yeah. Okay. He has very high standards. Right? Yeah. If you don't have a stone and you don't have these fucking skills, like I told you, the only your only other option is a pan pizza out of a cast iron pan, and it must be cast iron. Yeah, those come out very good too. Yeah, and it'll, you'll recognize that. You go, yeah, that's that's like a that's a pan pizza. Yeah, that's what that is. Yeah, it's because that cast iron can get hot enough and and actually conduct heat properly to to get that. Now here, now there's another problem with pan pizza, because pan pizza is forgiving and easy to make because you're assembling it inside of the pan. A bitch will get greedy. And start putting it. <laughs> Bitches get greedy. 
<laughs> they start putting too many goddamn toppings in the fucking pizza just because you can. <laughs> fuck it. Let's go ahead and let's fuck it. There's still room. Put that in there too. <laughs> so what ends up happening is when the moisture gets released, it swamps. Yeah, you pull it out. And yeah, you pull it out. It's boiling. The lake in the middle yeah. of the pizza. <laughs> All right. Even if you do that in a pan pizza, man, saute the and saute the toppings. Get the water out of them first. Okay, that'll really make a more forgiving conditions inside the pan pizza. All right. There's a another weird problem is that. The sauce is at the bottom, okay? So in that heat, the vapors from the sauce can't really escape normally because they've been sealed in by the cheese. So the parts of the parts of the crust boil instead of instead of bake. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So some places back in Chicago, instead of putting the sauce at the bottom, they put the cheese at the bottom. Yeah. All right. They put the cheese at the bottom, then they put some toppings, and then they put a little bit of sauce on the top of it. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some done like They'll that. They'll do it that way. Yeah. And when it cooks, the sauce does kind of seep down through the toppings, but because there's a, a certain amount of time involved, it didn't swamp. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Some of the moisture cooked away as it, as it kind of settled in. So you do have toppings on it when it comes out. But you don't see all that cheese. Some people will add cheese on top of that and cook it for a couple more minutes. You know, to you know what I'm talking about? Towards the end. That way, when you look at it, you see cheese. So there's cheese at the top and the bottom. Yeah. Now, you're talking about some serious fucking calories. Well, you know, more cheese and, is always and, delicious. And yeah. <laughs> now, some people might ask about what kind of cheese. In general, when you go to your average pizzeria, what they're using is partial skim milk mozzarella. It's acceptable. Just okay. like you buy at the grocery store. Right. But that's not ideal. Ideal, you want real fresh mozzarella, also known as buffalo mozzarella. It comes in a cake about this big, and it's usually pre-sliced. You just take that... The cake... Okay, well, I'm trying to remember the name. The cake is usually uh, vacuum-packed and clear plastic sometimes it's one cake and two cakes yeah i think sometimes. sam's has like the two cakes yeah. and i think it's 8.99 or 9.99 or something like that for two of them yeah so that means it's four dollars a cheese per pizza yeah so it's expensive but that's really good cheese that's the cheese that stretches all right mm -hmm. when you eat it it cooks the right way it, get, it gives a chewiness that you only had back in the 70s and in the early 80s when i was a kid going to pizzeria went went to places like round table pizza and stuff even even um, Pizza Hut, they were using mozzarella, uh, buffalo mozzarella cheese. It gave that nice stretch and chewiness to it. But then they cheapened it. They used partial skim milk mozzarella. It's, it's a big difference, but it's okay. Once, Do not fucking put expensive cheese on a pizza that you know you're going to fuck up. And you're going to be <laughs> fucking up. You're going to be fucking up. You're going to fuck up until you figure this out. So use partial skim milk until you get good at it. Don't fucking waste good good uh, ingredients on something that you haven't mastered yet. Okay, that's my that's my advice there. Um, when you're dealing with the with, with a, a cake of mozzarella, it's pre-sliced. Don't worry about grating it. Just pull the thing apart in the slices and break the slices into pieces and put it on top of the, the pizza. When it melts, it gets very liquidy. So it spreads out pretty well. But then as soon as it starts to cool, it starts to coagulate and become chewy. It's got the best flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was going to say, too, that if you want to get kind of creative with it, we've done pizzas with different kinds of cheese, too. Um, we made, we've made one with cream cheese on mm -hmm. it, uh, which was good. We've made one with... Um, did we make one with goat cheese or blue cheese or... Um, something I don't remember. I think we did. We've a blue used a bunch one. of different kinds of cheeses. I've used even even um, Philadelphia cream cheese yeah, with certain kinds that. of pizzas, and it, it works. It never browns. Uh, it does give a different dynamic. That's see. There's also things called white pizzas, and white pizzas don't have tomato sauce. Yeah, it's just I love white pizza. It's usually so. Yeah, I make a lot of those too. So it'd be like a white pizza with nothing but like. Um, olive oil that's been you know with garlic and 
uh, spices. And then uh, you put uh, fresh basil on it, um, sauteed onions, maybe uh, some special sauteed chicken breast toppings that I was using. That's another that that's that's another subject in itself. And then um, sliced tomatoes. Yeah, I like sun dried tomatoes. I like a white pizza with like yeah. slices of tomatoes. And on then it. a bunch of spinach. And some spinach. Yeah. A bunch of spinach that's been mixed up with different that's kinds really of good. cheese, like mozzarella cheese with with. And then you can use little bits of Philadelphia cream cheese as like an additional topping. Now, Amanda, I think Amanda said, don't use mozzarella with your pizza. Don't use bu buffalo mozzarella like with your pizza. Like fresh mozzarella, yeah. yeah. I, I've used it. Not not fresh mozzarella that I made, but I've used it. If it made your pizza soggy, maybe it's because your cooking um, temperature wasn't right. It should melt like all the rest of them. It should get pretty melty. But then when it cools, it re-solidifies. And uh, mozzarella's can brown. Uh, some cheeses don't brown, but mozzarella's do. Uh, but as far as the, the 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 buffalo mozzarella cakes that you can buy, you use those. They're good. Yeah, it works. Yeah, we've used it before. Yeah. I mean, usually we get the partial skim just because it's it's cheaper. cheaper. You can make more pizzas. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, mean, I always prefer the the little cakes that you yeah. get, like at Sam's or Costco. Yeah. But it's just so expensive that we don't. Like you said, you make yeah, it's four dollars in cheese just in cheese on a pizza. Yeah, that's only two pizzas right. worth of cheese there, and that's like you know ten bucks. Once you have all your skills. To make your own, make all your skills and everything you need to make pizzas paid for and out of the way. You're making your own doughs and you're making your own sauces and stuff. You're like your own pizza sauce. Um, you, I can get the price of a large pizza down to probably about a dollar. Yeah, I mean, depending on what you're put on it. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a big initial investment for yeah. all the stuff, like the stone and the peel yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But once you get it all figured out, like the ingredients for it are actually pretty cheap. They're unless cheap. you're putting fancy ass shit on it. That's the reason why pizza pizzeria and pizzas are so um they're so successful in the United States is because it's high profit. Yeah. If it's done right. Yeah. You can make a large pizza for about a dollar. Yeah. And sell it for like, fucking ten. Yeah, yeah. It's a big markup, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, obviously, like look at people like Little Caesars and shit like that. They sell those yeah. fucking pizzas for five dollars, you know what I mean? Right. If you pick them up. But um, I wanted to say something too. I'm not sure if like people that aren't from the U.S., but what one of the big things about American pizza is particularly the rivalry between New York style pizza and Chicago style pizza. Now other places have other kinds of pizzas too. Like I think like fucking St. Louis has its own kind of pizza. It's like uh, you know everywhere has their own kind of pizza. But the big thing is like because Chicago, they do more of like a deep dish kind of shit. Um, so sometimes like New Yorkers will say that that's not a pizza, it's a casserole or, you know, something like that. Whereas New York, they tend to do not real thin, thin crust, but like kind of a floppy foldable yeah. piece. Yeah. Dario's taught mentioning that too. <clears throat> He's talking about what, what he likes, he, what he likes in pizza. Yeah. Pizza. There's, there's different types of pizza, different regional versions, Chicago, New York, uh pizza there's a lot of rivalry between the types of pizza um but really what makes pizza unique or what makes a pizza unique or what makes a pizza very good is the damn texture and most of the shit that i'm trying to tell you it doesn't have anything to do with flavor it's about texture if the texture is wrong the pizza will be shit yeah pizza's all texture yeah and that's what I learned from by trial and error. You can have the best fucking ingredients, the best shit, and if it's wrong, it tastes like shit. Not because of the taste or the ingredients, it's because the fucking texture is wrong. Yeah. And I mean, the thing about it, I was going to say that it's like, uh, you know, deep dish, thin crust, regular crust. Yeah. Um, It's all good. I, I don't really have a preference. It just kind of depends on whatever mood I'm in that day. Sometimes I'm like, oh, deep dish sounds good. Sometimes thin crust sounds good. You know, some, and like I said, I'll eat pretty much any toppings. I can't eat pepperoni anymore. Cause like I said, heartburn, but, um, and, uh, I tend, I tend to like, um, more on the veggie side. I, you know, I like meat on there. I like hamburger on there, but I don't like real spicy meats on there. Um, you know, so I tend more toward, you know, yeah. onions mushrooms tomatoes like big hunks of tomato stuff like that 
spinach is good right. on there. Like yeah. I said, the the white pizza. Actually, there's a pizza place right around the corner from uh, I Bar, and uh, that's open all the time, as right. far as I know. And um, they actually do a really nice white pizza with chunks of tomato and spinach on yeah. it. That's actually pretty decent. So let me go over again real quick the rules. Water is the enemy of pizza. At all stages. At all stages of production. Okay. <clears throat> pizza must be cooked on a stone or cast iron. It just has to. Cooking temperature is as high as possible. Cooking time is as low as possible. The best New York pizza started at Lombardi's. It's a place down in New York. And evidently, it's not, it's not, it ain't shit compared to way, what it was back in the day. But New York pizza and pizza in general in the United States was born in Lombardi's. And Lomb Lombardi's, the reason why Lombardi's was a pizzeria is because it was a kiln before it was a restaurant. And they were in there, they were doing something with porcelain. I think they just made porcelain pots and shit. And then it changed hands, became a pizzeria. Some Italians took it over. And they introduced pizza. Now, it wasn't exactly the same pizza that you know, but it was that same dough and that same type of crust. And that that oven was like a thousand degrees at all times. It never cooled down. It burned all the way throughout the night. It wasn't even worth it to fucking let the oven cool off. It took too long. So they just kept that coal fire going for like a hundred years. <laughs> it never fucking... They never, they it, never it, put it, it out. They never put it out. Okay. And uh, I think the cooking time on one of their pizzas was like some amazingly low, like three or four minutes. Yeah. And when it came out, it was crispy and chewy and had burnt high, high spots on it. And it was just, that was like the perfect New York pizza. It was not the pizza that you really know today. I mean, they weren't even really round. They were more like oval. Because they threw them in there so fast. Yeah. Um, they had different kind of toppings. It was more like focaccia in a certain way. It might have olive oil on it and some tomatoes. Which is more like it was yeah. back in Italy. Yeah. And then maybe they added a piece of cheese later. There was red, white, and green on them. And yeah. that was because that was the colors of the Italian flag. Yeah. It's that simple. You know. That's why it did it. Yeah. And for it spread from there. Italian gangsters made it famous. A lot of people don't know. Al Capone had a lot to do with the success of pizza. Yep. Uh, Al Capone liked Chicago pizza, which was kind of like what you would call as a hand tossed pizza, and a, or a deep dish, which yeah. was like a cat was a cast iron pan. Yeah, yeah. All right. You didn't need a sophisticated oven to do that. All right. <clears throat> when Al Capone became kind of like a criminal superstar they couldn't get anything pinned on him he hung, he hung out in bars that sold pasta pizza chicago deep ditch pizza and um booze but they they sold the booze illegally but they were selling it there but he would hang out there and have meetings and people would come see him and the newspapers came in there one day and, and said that he was eating an exotic Italian dish called pizza and they asked him about it and he said you know I don't remember exactly what it was but he what he said but paraphrasing he said it was the perfect food because you could eat it for breakfast lunch or dinner and it was an entire meal just all in in one pan he was ahead of his time he was ahead of his time <laughs> well because he said that everybody wanted to know what this fucking strange Italian dish that these fucking famous gangsters were, were eating and that made pizza famous which is hilarious when you think about it. Yeah. Just like one famous dude that was like, and, well, it's yeah. hilarious to us now because pizza seems like such a quote unquote American food because no. everybody fucking eats it. Not in those days. But ba yeah, back in yeah. those days. Well, shit, man. Like I said, we've talked about this before, but we've had like really old like recipe books where spaghetti and meatballs and stuff like that was seen as like some exotic foreign food. Foreign food. <laughs> and they had to explain to you what oregano was. Right. And, that, <laughs> and they, they would say oregano is like a very exotic Italian uh you know herb and you sh you can get it in certain specialty stores and shit and what was funny is that that would be the only s herb in it yeah salt pepper i think a little uh salt pepper and oregano that's what was in the tomato sauce just that which i can't imagine that i mean that must have been like super bland yeah real bland which it didn't even but they didn't I mean... you know but i think things were kind of bland then they were i guess 
Well, at least here, like I said. Until until all the good people immigrated and were kind of like, hey, here's some good food with spices in it. <laughs> Get your food together. I, don't think, I, don't, I really don't think that's what it was. What I think that was was availability. That too, yeah. There didn't have they didn't have a distribution center for any of that. So because they couldn't dis they couldn't distribute it, people didn't know about it. Yeah. And because they didn't know about it, they didn't request it. There was no market for it. It wasn't until people were exposed to things or you had companies that had the ability to deliver things to the far reaches of the United States and they had good things to sell. So they had to let people know about them. Yeah. One, one of the ones I'm thinking about would have been, would have been Heinz. The Heinz company was one of the first like real mass marketing companies. They had direct salesmen that went to all these little mom pa stores and all these little, um, what do you call them? Like, uh, general stores. And they, would introduce themselves to the store owner and they said, you know, we're a food company. And if you agree to work with us, we'll come in and we'll bring a, a, a shelf aisle, a special aisle for our products and, and, and our products only. And you'll get a cut of the profits and we'll deliver it. We'll handle all the stock. Don't worry about it. You just sit back, ring up the cash register and you'll make money. So Heinz was really the first big corporation that on a nationwide level tried to, to, to distribute food everywhere. And the reason why they were able to do it, this is pre-refrigeration, and they were able to do it because all their stuff was basically pickled. Yeah. It was pickled and, and jarred, and some of it was canned. And it was meat and vegetables, both. But, but what was weird is that their definition of what a vegetable was, was would not be recognizable by you. Ketchup was a vegetable. Yeah. Mayonnaise was like a meat. <laughs> okay. And fucking mustard was a vegetable. <laughs> and pickles were a vegetable. Well, I well, mean, then pickles that started out as a vegetable. <laughs> well, it's, and that all sounds familiar because that's your condiments. Yeah. And in the 1800s, those were considered to be vegetables. Yeah. That was some high-tech shit. It was like pureed vegetables that you didn't need to refrigerate that would last for a long time. Stuff that had eggs in it. And you could put it on meat, which eventually gave birth to the hamburger. Yeah. Which is also considered to be foreign at the time. Which a lot of people don't know that hamburgers were not considered to be American when they when they appeared. They were considered to be kind of German because it was Hamburg beef. Yeah, they were from Hamburg, ground beef, in a damn dinner roll, with some pickles, and some sautéed onions, and some vegetables from Hunts or Heinz, which meant ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, and it was a company called White Cast. That was the first hamburger. Well, it was funny. People think that, well, McDonald's or, or no, hamburgers were something that were made at home. It was traditional. No, hamburgers came from White fucking Castle. <laughs> All right. And they had to hire doctors to stand outside of them and tell people that they were safe to eat. <laughs> people were like, they wouldn't eat that shit. And they put them outside factories. So the factory workers, and they would, you know, they would, they had a whole campaign to convince factory workers that this was safe, nutritious food that had meat and vegetables and bread all in all in a single meal and you could afford to eat it. And you could carry it in one hand. You could carry it. <laughs> well, now they always sold them in a six pack. Yeah, they were in those, well, because we have that too, but it's crystal. Yeah. Ours crystal. are called crystal, crystal with a K. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, now we're getting off the subject of pizza though. Yeah, we'll have to do a whole burger episode yeah, yeah. one of these days. But yeah, so uh, was there anything else you needed to say about pizza? You you went like pretty in depth into like how to make. Darius says I heard somewhere in the south they deep fry pizza. Man, they would deep fry anything in the south, man. Yeah, that, I've never seen it, but never it wouldn't it. it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, but <laughs> deep fried ice cream, deep fried Mars bars. They do that in Scotland as yeah, well. Deep fried stuff. Mars bars. Yeah, that actually kind of sounds good. Well, yeah. deep fried anything sounds pretty good. I gotta say. Yeah. But um, yeah, I even like a corn dog every now and then. Okay, are there any you guys have any questions about dough or anything about pizza? You can put it in the comments section. Yeah, do it. Oh, quick. T says, man, your stomach grumbling for pizza. <laughs> At least I'm, but it's good that we, you know, eat before we do the show. So then I'm yeah. not like sitting there making myself hungry. Like I said, we didn't have pizza today. We had brisket. 
We're talking about anchovies <laughs> on pizza. I never liked it. Yeah, I'm not a you fan. I re I like um I like fish in general, but anchovies it's just too much. Um, I'm not hating on you if you do like that, but it's yeah. just I don't know. I'll, I'll eat like I said pretty much any kind of pizza topping, but anchovies. Ah. Eh. What's a shame is I'd that I'd rather not. What's a shame is that the era of the big ma and pa family-owned pizzeria seems to be gone. I don't know why. I guess it's a lost skill. Maybe it's not energy efficient. You can't get enough people to go in and out of there. Could be that pizza has kind of a low end, um, kind of a low end image nowadays. Like, oh, why, why would I go in there and spend all this money when I can get that at, you know, in five minutes coming out of Pizza Hut? You know, it might be something like that. But some of the mom and pa pizzerias that I grew up with in California, man, were fantastic. And you'll never you'll never really be able to buy those again. You have to fucking make that at home. And you really got to know what you're doing to replicate how good pizza used to be. It's not as good as it was. It used to be much better. Although the thing about much it better. is that I think if you want like really good pizza out, you're yeah. going to have to go to like sort of a boutique, yeah, you know, kind of fancy pizza place that actually makes everything from scratch. Yeah, although sometimes that sucks too. Like Pizzeria Uno would be considered that. And I hate their pizza. I, I like their shrimp pizza. They shit. had like a shrimp pizza that was not too bad. But that was a long time ago that I ate that. The best chain pizza I remembered from back in the day was old school. Old school um, uh, round table pizza was really good out in California. The old school original California Chuck E. Cheese. And that was a location out in California. It was an arcade. They had a pizzeria in there that was fantastic. That's not what they're serving on a nationwide level. But well, no, obviously. The, the original one? Oh, man. Yeah, that was good. Really good. Uh, there was a really good uh, mom and pa Italian place called Fioritos. I think it was might have been in Long Beach or out in that area. I don't know if it exists anymore. Probably not. Probably not. But that place was fucking amazing. And that was real Italians working in there. And... Uh, the entire wall of the kitchen was was plexiglass, so you could see what they were doing in there, and it was like ten dudes just making pizzas, and the place was always packed, fucking beautiful pizza. And um, the only other pizzas ever close to those old school shit or that I get nowadays are are, are the ones I make. Yeah, because I'm kind of doing it similar to the way they did. There are still certain things that they did that I don't know how the fuck they did. I can remember what it tasted like. I can remember how it smelled. I, I can't really quite replicate it. Um. They did it differently. They made really big pizzas, which tells me that they had a huge peel and they had a big old fucking oven. We cut we cut slices. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. like triangular slices out of pizza. They didn't do that. They cut it in a grid. Some, pe some places square. still do that. Yeah. yeah. They're like square pieces in the middle and stuff. They yeah. cut it in a grid. Um, as far as chains go right now, probably if you were talking about corporate chains, the best pizza places right now would probably be like Papa John's. Although some people hate Papa John's. I like, I think it's the best one. I like their sauce the best. I mean, yeah. uh, it's like none of them are fantastic, but yeah. if you just want a pizza quick, it's like delivered to your house. I would mean, pick that one. They're, yeah, they're all decent. I think yeah. I like Papa John's sauce the best. Yeah, I um, like all of their, I, I just like the pizza in general the best. Yeah. It's better than, uh, better than, a lot better, okay, Pizza Hut is fast, and you know exactly what it is that's coming, but it's super, super generic. Yeah. It's nowhere near as good as it was when I was a kid. When I was a kid, Pizza Hut was fucking awesome. It was good. Well, it was a sit-down restaurant. It was a sit-down restaurant. It was expensive. You went in there, and there yeah. was like a jukebox, and you get a big yeah. pitcher of beer, and like, yeah. yeah. It was good, <laughs> and, and you walked in there and just smell the place. T probably remembers, because I was out in California. Out in California, when you sat down there, man, that place fucking smelled great. But it started to, to decline. It started to become kind of more like a buff, like a buffet, where you could pay all you could eat, and then they'd have fucking pizzas out in the in the middle of the thing. And then it started to go the way of like CC's. Well, yeah, CC's is and a pizza then, buffet. Yeah, and then they kind of rebooted it and went, no, 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 we're 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 like the Italian Burger King. That's what it became now, like Burger King. Yeah. The Burger King of pizza. Yeah, it's just yeah. everything's just, you know, quick and cheap, which, like I said, if you don't feel like making a pizza, because, you know, it is a time commitment, obviously, like making a pizza, you got to make the dough a couple yeah. days ahead, you got to make the sauce, which has to cook for a while and stuff like that. So I can understand just ordering it and we do it every now and then. Um, but 
it's just never as good as the ones you make. And like I said, I still, I still fondly remember when I was a kid getting pizza from Pantheon, getting that hamburger and onion pizza. And again, yeah. it was a big, it was like, yeah. a, like that big. Yeah. And it was uh, not, like I said, the sp the meat wasn't real spicy, but it was just like a big, it had a really, really nice crust on it. It was just like a really nice flavor. Yeah. And I don't even know if that fucking place is T's, there anymore. T's in there tripping out over the British people. <laughs> Man goes in there talking about putting big beans on pizza. Fucking teeth going, big beans on pizza? Y'all crazy. Yeah, man. Hey, people are I saw crazy, I saw man. corn niblets on pizza yeah. over there. So they're not the only ones that are crazy though, because uh, the Japanese also put corn niblets Brazilians, on pizza. Brazilians do fucking crazy shit with pizza too. They don't really know what they're doing. And, <laughs> and, 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 and we just put whatever shit. Brazilian on pizza is almost steamed. It's like shit. Or at least it used to be. You know, your real common ones. They it may, didn't have a crisp crust. It was just like a doughy bullshit. And they'd have fucking chickpeas on the damn pizza and fucking green green uh peas on the damn and, and, and hearts of palm sliced hearts of palm just cheap shit that brazilians have in cans you know they put that on the pizza it's, it's like shit but they did have some places that could execute good pizza they didn't have pepperoni though they had something called calabresa which is like pepperoni kind of not quite as spicy uh so we used to we used to get that calabresa pizza and it was like close to like a slice of kind of like new york pepperoni pizza kind of the texture was correct that's the reason why i liked it it did not taste like pepperoni though similar but you could tell the difference yeah yeah it was more kind of like uh cured ham which ain't yeah, nothing wrong with that yeah but not i don't remember it as being a sausage though yeah it was like a cured ham well like i said you can get you know yeah. you can get like hawaiian quote-unquote pizza here that has like chunks of ham and yeah. pineapple on it and you know nothing like that Amanda said, last time I ordered Pizza Hut, my dog ate the pizza and I ate the breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about pizza, I kind of feel like, I don't know what it is. I think Pizza Hut puts too much shit on the pizza. There's just too much shit on there. You know what I mean? It's just, it's too heavy. I don't know. It depends on what you get. That's true. I mean, you know. I mean, Like I said, I'm not going to turn it down if it's free. But... They'll put whatever you want to put on a damn pizza, you know? I well when I like I like pizza with like a thin layer of sauce and a bunch of cheese. I don't like a bunch of soupy sauce on there. Yeah. I just like a little bit of sauce and a bunch of cheese. Yeah, that's another thing is that when you're new to making pizza, you have a tendency to like I said before, getting fucking greedy. Oh, I'll put more. Oh, I put more it'll be even better. Nah. Less is more on a pizza always. Yeah, I mean, kind of keep it simple. You there's, know? A, a, there's a maximum amount of shit you can put on a pizza. Once you reach a certain amount, you can't put any more. It just starts to get worse. So if you're going to make something like a Supreme pizza that has a whole lot of stuff on it, or a whole lot of different things, there can't be very much of each one. And yeah. that kind of goes against your intuition. Like, that's not a, ver that's not a lot of fucking olives. I said, well, that'll be a lot of olives once you put it up, once you realize... How much all those other toppings you got? Would you put forty thousand? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's gonna all add up, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it's the kind of like I kind of like to stay away from supreme type pizzas. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. It's like really, I don't like. Yeah. I like you know a couple of toppings. Yeah, three, two, two, or, two three. or three tops. Right. More toppings than that, you're just like you're asking for trouble because you're gonna have an olive, but only have like maybe one olive a slice. Because there has to be a couple of pepperonis on it. And then there has to be a couple little pieces of onion. And then there has to be like a couple little pieces of something or other. So the next thing you know, there, there's a lot of different stuff on each slice, but not a lot of it. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I feel like the more shit you put on there, it's like you can't really taste, you can't taste it any anyway. of the individual right. components. Right. There has to be, there's like one little olive on your slice. Yeah. But if you had 20 on there, then the whole thing would soup out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, frankly, like when you make pizza, for me, I'm just kind of like, I like mushroom and maybe some bell pepper yeah. on it. And then that's about it. You yeah. Know what I mean, it's good like that. You can taste all the individual components. Oh, another thing I forgot to say is that pepperoni on, uh, on a home pizza. If you, you can go down to Publix and get a little package of the pre-sliced pepperoni at pretty much any of these grocery stores. stores yeah but if you have a sam's account or costco or costco you get a much better deal you can get you can get a package of two big bags this big for like about eight bucks and that's really only the price of a couple of the little small ones 
and you take that and you can put that in the freezer. It'll freeze indefinitely. You can top the pizza with that, make a shit ton of pizza. That's what I was saying. You know, my pizzas only end up being about a dollar. It's like a dollar worth of stuff on it. Yeah. That's it. Because you buy everything in bulk. That's why you want to get yeast in bulk. You don't want those Just little like ones. Because the, this is only a couple bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll make that'll make a lot of stuff. Well, shit, yeah. Because yeah. to make the dough, to make enough dough for like two or three pe big pizzas, you only need what? Like a couple tablespoons of that, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It lasts a long time. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you don't talk about pizza? I'm done talking about pizza. See, you've been going to... Somebody in the comments said yeah, on the show yesterday, it said you found your calling because it's like you actually stayed on one single topic. Yeah. For more than an hour, which you did today too. Damn. Talking about food, see. And I'm sleepy too. And you're sleepy too. I tell you, you did good. See, <laughs> not only did I bring all this shit back, where I got like the fucking testosterone levels of fucking three, three fucking fifteen year old boys. Oh, now it's three. I and thought it was got three. Two yesterday. I got three. No, two. every time I talk about it, there's more. <laughs> there's more of them there's in more there. There's more of them in here. <laughs> there was a fucking side effect I I forgot about. <laughs> when you start going backwards in time to become a child again, <laughs> not only not only do you start fucking stinking and shit, and your stocks start stinking like you're your little kid and shit, <laughs> but also you run real hard. You start aging in dog years where you're fucking sweating all the time, you know, like that. But then all of a sudden you want to sleep all day. Yeah, you have energy, but it. It was back when I was a teenager, dude. I have all this energy, and then all of a sudden, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, They're just, like teenage yeah. boys, and they'll like yeah, sleep, sleep for like fucking 12 hours. Yeah, sleep for 12 hours. <laughs> start doing that. It kind of seems to be happening in a cycle. Yeah. So yeah. every time it's bad, because it's like every time it's like afternoon, and it's time to live stream or record some yeah, stuff, yeah, and he's just always kind of like... Yeah, and I already fucking, you know, went on a fucking two mile hike and shit. Fucking hey, I did a three mile hike with a, three, with, with a pack. with a with yeah. a backpack. I, I did backpack. like a fucking speed fucking run. And uh yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'll live tomorrow. I feel like I'm growing. Growth. 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 Yeah, somebody said yeast equals growth. Yeah, yeast <laughs> equals growth. That's right. We're gonna sprinkle some yeast Sleepy on you. Right now. Right well, now. you can go take a nap now because you you did good. We recorded yeah. a movie review today, to, and you did like an hour long mm. thing on the thing. Yeah. So, you know, you did good. You can go, you can go take a nap. You earned it. Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. That's funny, man. All right. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Probably tomorrow we'll uh, do a movie review because I can find a new movie mm. tonight. We can talk about that because, like I said, I don't want to wear out all the food topics, even though these are fun to do. Mm -hmm. I actually do, but I don't want to get too much out of the movie thing too but uh yeah so we'll watch a new one tonight and we can do that um tomorrow so thanks everybody for dropping by listening to us talking about pizza yeah and uh we'll see you guys see you again guys tomorrow bye